Okay, now this time we're going to be trying to find the centroid of this composite shape. Now composite shapes can be difficult, except they're not. <laughs> okay, now the way to do this is always to make a table. I'm just going to tell you right now that a table is your best friend when it comes to this. And then you break it up into various shapes. So for me, I'm going to say I've got a little square right here. And I've got a rectangle right here. And I've got a circle. Okay. So square, rectangle, circle. Since I'm trying to find the centroid, I'm going to need a couple of different things. I'm going to need their area. Okay. That's not too hard to calculate. I'm going to need um, their individual centroid locations. And then I should also get those multiplied together. Okay, I'll go ahead and put a sum right here. So I'm going to get all these values and then I can go forward. Beautiful. Hopefully enough room. I think I've given us enough space. We'll see. First off, the areas. For that square down here, it's a 2 by 2 square, so that'll be 4 inches squared. For the rectangle is a six by four, so that's 24 inches squared. And for this circle, it's a two inch diameter hole. So let's plug it in the calculator. And so pi r squared is two inches in diameter, so one inch radius. Well, it's just gonna be pi, so it'll be 3.14 inches squared, that's pi. Pi is roughly equal to 3.14. There's a lot more decimal places it goes on forever, but pi. And then I'm going to add all those together. So I'll get 31.14. 20 plus 3.14, yes. 31.14. Now where are their centroids? Well, their centroids are at the center of these shapes because they're all nice little squares and rectangles. So with that in mind, let's work through it. So the square, its centroid is at its center, but now I have an issue. Where am I measuring from? In my case, I'm going to measure from this top left corner, and I'm going to measure down. That's going to be positive, and right's going to be positive. Okay? And I'll consider this to be the y direction, and this to be the x direction. So this will be one inch in the y direction, because we've gone half that distance, and it will be four plus one inch right here in the y direction. That's going to be five. For the rectangle, its center is actually at the center of the circle, and it's going to be three and a half inches in the x and two inches in the y. For the circle, it's going to be the exact same location, 3.5 and 2, and that's all the shapes. Now, I've already realized I made one mistake. Um, the circle is empty, which means it has a negative area for our little case here. So I should have said 28 minus 3.14 instead of 28 plus 3.14. So 28 minus 3.14, 24.86. Okay, that's now fixed. Don't worry about having a negative um, like location, just the area will be negative, it'll make everything else work nice. Now I multiply everything together. So I get right here, four, this will be five. And that'll be inches cubed if you really wanna check the units. Well, I'm saying that's going to be not going to be five. It's going to be twenty. It's four times five is twenty, if I can do math. And then I get twenty-four times three point five, which is going to be eighty-four. And then twenty-four times two, which is going to be forty-eight. And my circle. Three point one four times two is going to be six point two eight. Once again, it's negative because I got a negative area. And 3.14 times 3.5, that's a bit too difficult for your poor professor. So I'm going to multiply that in my calculator. That'll be 10.99. Okay, now I'm going to add all these together. Remembering that these at least are negative. So I have 88 minus 11, which is going to give me 77 right here. And then I have 68 minus 6.28. Eight. Okay, so 68 minus 6.28, 
will give me, I think, 61.72. And let me check that. Yes, that's correct. And now I have everything I need to solve, okay? Because what I need to find the centroid is, I know the centroid in the x direction is going to be equal to the sum of the areas, individual areas, times little x squiggly hat. I'll use a lowercase a for these individual areas over the total area, which guess what? I have this now and I have this. I already have my sum of the individual areas times their centroid. And I have the sum of the total area. And the same thing for my y bar. Okay, so I then plug this in. What I get is I have 77 over 24.86, and I have 61.72 over 24.86. And what does it come out to be? Well, let's type in the calculator. So, 77 divided by 24.86, 3.097. So I'm just going to say that's 3.1. Okie doke. And how about in the y direction? That'll be 61.72 divided by 24.86. And that comes out to be 2.48. 2.48. Okay. And does this actually make sense? You should check yourself. Well, in both cases, it's very, very close to the center of that rectangle, but it's been moved just a little bit towards the square, which makes sense. That square is going to be moving it, offsetting it slightly. And so I'm good with that. That seems to make sense. It should be correct. So this table is your best friend. With any of these kinds of problems, a table is your best friend because it's just the best way of note keeping to make sure you don't miss a step and get the problems wrong. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.